Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly see in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. divine nature, who lives and reigns with you 
and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We will not understand, for God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Here I am. 
I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we are being made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please all stand to honor the Holy Gospel.
Brother Paulus Asamanek, MOP. Here I am. Brother Henricos Atilubur, MOP. Here I am. Brother Yumanchus Numba, MOP. Here I am. Brother Ropiros Osi Solo, MOP. Here I am. Brother Lazarus Dos Tres Castro, MOP. Here I am. Brother Ardelinos Venancios Mambay, here I am. The candidates for first profession of vows will now declare the intention Reverend Father Henry V. DeSano, MOP, the local superior and the representative of the most reverend Joseph E. Harris, CSSP, the pontifical commissary of the missionaries of the Pope. My dear brothers, what do you ask of God and His Holy Church? I ask for God's merciful love, the more perfectly, they institute the missionaries of the poor. Thanks be to God. Please all be seated for the homily. Good afternoon. Before I share with you something, may I ask for a excuse that I am not wearing my mask. If I have to wear that, I will begin to sneeze in fun, and it will disturb us so much. Reverend Father Richard Holom, the Reverend Founder of this institution, the Missionaries of the Poor, Father Henry, my brother priest, brothers of the Missionaries of the Poor, sisters of the different congregation, I can recognize each one of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We have come to join our nine brothers to have their vows today for the first time that there is temporary vows after two years and the novitiate. But it has been so good that this occasion as we pray for them and join them in their prayer as well as in their giving themselves to God through the church, it has been planned that it be on this day the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord and to Mary to be the mother of the Son of God. For this, my brothers and sisters, I see some beautiful parallelism between the life of Mary and for us who have given ourselves and the service of the church through the different charisms that we are called and gifted by God. And so I want to reflect something on the vocation of the religious as well as the vocation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yes, we have a common thing. Mary was called by God to be the mother of his son for one purpose to bring Jesus to people and people to Jesus. For all of us, whether missionaries of the poor, diocesan priests, or whatever religious congregation we belong, this is our sole purpose, to bring Christ to the people and the people be brought to Christ. How do I see our vocation in relation or in parallel to that of Mary. Let me reflect something on these nine brothers who will have their profession. Before you come to this occasion, you were prepared for two years as novices. And after two years, people who are in charge for your profession. God did the same to Mary. You know, before the Annunciation that we are celebrating today, God has prepared Mary to be the mother of the Son of God. 
and fact, he has spared her from original sin. She was immaculately conceived just as to become fitting mother. I wish to see that moment before this annunciation that we are celebrating as the novice sweet moment of our being prepared by her prepared by God, being prepared for time. Now today, because she has been sent by God as ready for that vocation, for the task that she is called for, now comes to her that today you will be the mother of my son. Brothers and sisters, I wish to limit myself simply my reflection on the gospel reading that we have today, the narrative of the Annunciation. At first, I was instructed by the angel sent by God, so described by the gospel that God sent an angel to Mary to announce to her that the Son of God is to be born and he will be the mother of that Son of God that will become man to dwell and be with us here on earth. I recall some when I was, it was some 6, 1968. Many of you were not yet born, were not even of our, but I was in elementary grade. I was always the first honor from grade 1 to grade 5. And I wanted to be sure that I will be the valedictorian in grade 6. There were that time, the educational system in the Philippines, there is this theme writing, both in Tagalog and in English. Because I want to be the best among the class, I asked my cousin, who has not a very nice impression, or about her life, a bit scandalous cousin of mine, but she, is very, she was very bright as chemical engineer. And so I asked her, because the thing was about my ambition in life. And so I just told her, could you write for me my last name, my ambition in life? I did not tell her whatever she would write, or what my ambition would be. The following morning, she gave me that paper and the long pad, and it says this way, To be a priest was all my dream since I started my elementary grades. People would say that it is not good to be priests because they do not receive salary or materialistic sins. But anyway, it was not. Then when I submitted it to my teacher, Oh, she announced it to the class. One of you would like to be a priest. Then it circulated in the whole campus that I will be a priest. I cannot escape it, but simply accept to them, yes, I want to be a priest. But that was never my dream. To me, my brothers and sisters, that cousin of mine is the angel sent by God to announce to me what am I being called for by God? I remember this as the starting moment of that good relationship with God. And of course, you who are now having your profession today, as well as the other religious congregations who are here, who accepted the call in the announcement of God, had that the same experience. You can still recall the person who encouraged you, who invited you, or even called you, or even walked with you, and has been revealing to you that you will be a brother, that you will be a sister, that you will be a priest. For me, those persons were the angels sent by God. The same angel that sent by God to Mary to announce her to her that she will be the mother of the Son of God. Mary, I'm sure, was surprised about that announcement because she has her own plan. 
like a student when we heard the invitation or the letter perhaps from the vocation promoter inviting us for a search in or whatever, we question ourselves, am I the right person for that? Am I the person called to be such? Is this truly the call of God? Mary reacted the same, because when she heard the angel, she asked her question, How can this be, since I do not know man? Isn't it that we ask ourselves, Am I fit for that? Is this the congregation I want to go? Is this the vocation to be a brother, not a priest? Or is this my vocation to be a priest in the diocese or in the religious congregation? Yes, we were searching. The angel explained to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the son that you will give birth is the son of the Most High. After the angel explained to Mary, she did not have question, and she already pondered upon the step, and I'm sure she has given herself to that question of the angel. Yes, my brothers and sisters, that time we were in quest for something in our life. However, person, vocation directors, members of the community, people around us were to keep on encouraging us and telling us that you will be there. We will be behind you. We will pray for you. We will support you. And we will be walking with you until you have reached that goal for which you are doing. Brothers and sisters, God made use of ordinary persons just as to make us realize that He is calling us that He has something for us to do, and that we have some space and gifts in order for us to be of service to Him. Wherever we are, whatever charism we are doing, or whatever congregation we are in, or whatever we are be the lay people, God will always call you, because precisely God has equipped us with many other things so that we can complement with each other, so that the church will be full of people serving in the Spirit of Christ, as well as the needs of the people be given to us and be, be served to them. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we have different callings in our life, but it is a call from God. It is a call of service. It is a call to life. It is a call to holiness. And this we do in the different things that we are doing in the community. I'm sure when these nine brothers of us who will help their profession today experience those things in their life. But good, now they are here, ready to say to God, Yes, Lord, here I am. I have come to do it your will. Here I am, Lord. I am giving myself. I am giving my commitment to you. To be celibate, to be poor, to be obedient, and to serve the poorest of the poor. That is the vocation given to you, my God. That is why at the end, like Mary, after the explanation of the angel, he simply said, Behold the servant of the Lord, I have come to do your will. That was the profession of Mary and the incarnation of him because of that yes of Mary to the announcement of God. We are so joyful today because that announcement sent to us by God through different events persons and happenings we have listened to it and now we are celebrating with gratitude and enjoy this day of the profession of our brothers and sisters I contemplated on the life of Mary how she received the invitation 
for the announcement of the angel. The first one I see in her was Mary was so joyful when she heard the announcement and explained to her by the angel. That is why even in the Magnificat, she sang it. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. What is that joy that seek us and responding to this announcement of the angel? It is a joy because God has chosen her to be the mother of God. It is a joy because of the many people in Nazareth, the eyes of God falls on her, and the eyes of God has chosen her to be the mother of God. And so God was the joy of Mary and accepting that announcement, that calling, that invitation of the Lord to be the mother of God. And that joy was the quality of the life of Mary in serving her son, Joseph, and even the community in Nazareth where they were living. That joy because she has been chosen. Today in our hearts, brothers and sisters, religious, that is also our joy because God has called us. And God has shown us the way how we can be certain in joy. Even the works of Mary and all our works, we are happy because they are expression of our joy because God has chosen us. The second thing is I saw in Mary and responding to this announcement of the angel with so much gratitude. She was grateful to God, not only because she has been chosen, but because she has something to contribute to the plan of God to save. And so perhaps in her heart, thank you, Lord, because you have told me. Now I have something to give of myself in order for your plan of salvation to mankind be fulfilled. Isn't it that we are grateful to God because he has, he has pointed out to us the specific kind of life, the specific task, the specific mission that we must do because we have been told by God. Had it not been for us, perhaps even up to now, we might be grouping in the night or somewhere else because we do not know where we are going. How can we serve our Lord? How can we serve our people? And how can we give ourselves? Now that we have been told by God, we are serving and we are grateful today, grateful for it. We know how we should live our life. We know the means in order to become productive, holy, and at the same time serving as God wants us to serve Him. Let us be grateful for whatever situation of life we are in, whatever profession we are in, because God has put us in that profession, be for the religious or be for the laity. God has a specific something. And from that service that we have, that's the moment we can sanctify ourselves. Serve the church. Serve God. And let us not look for other ways in order to serve Him. But where we are and whatever time, as long as we are here. Both for the lady as well as for those and the consecrated life, we have to bloom where we are planted by God. And so that we can bear fruit, fruit that will last and will help and benefit all kind of people. The third quality of her answer was that 
she has given herself so dedicatedly the Gospels, meditations on Mary, teachings on my theology, we will see that Mary has been the faithful disciple of God. Why from the beginning of the Annunciation down to the cross of Christ, Mary was always on the side of Jesus. When she said yes to the announcement of God through the angel, she lived it and she did everything as part of it. And she has given herself dedicatedly without any reservation, without any question, but simply giving herself to the service of the people, to the service of her son, and above all, to God. This is supposed to be our life. They we are in the secular world or in the common secretion life. Is sometimes we are afraid of many things. But you know, for me who have been a priest for 40 years, parang hindi ko na kayang maghanap pa sa Diyos. Ano pa kaya ang kailangan ko? Bakit ako matatakot? for to face all these things in this world. And the length of time, 40 years, 66 years, God did never prostrate. God did not abandon. But continuously promising and promising to us and fulfilling that promise, assuring us, do not be afraid. It is I. Do not be afraid. It is I. This was his promise to the apostles who were drowning on the sea of Galilee. Then she has promised us more. I shall be with you to the end of time. This is providence. This is God's presence in our midst. This is God doing the things for us. And we should realize these are all works of Christ. We are simply sharing in the work of Christ. So we must give much attention to Him who is working through us, not so much on the works that we are doing. Sometimes we forget the glory of the works. That is why we get tired. Sometimes we question. Sometimes we are in darkness because we focus on work. Then, my brothers and sisters, even in our daily life, God has been always promising us in Jesus. This is my body. This is my blood. Every day we partake of it. So why should we be afraid of what is to come? Of our future? What will happen to us? Will I fail in my ministry? Will I do something good for Him? How about the needs that I have? in order for this mission, especially for the poorest of the poor, can be supplied. It is God who promises us, I am with you. Mary has that kind of faith, truly relying on God, truly relying on the providence of God. And true enough, Mary was never frustrated in her life. Today she is showing herself to us as an example of our journey, of our commitment, even of the promise that is to come as a gift and as a reward for us who has served, who are serving the Lord, and for us who has served the Lord for some time. Brothers and sisters, these are all the things that we can see and reflect upon on this solemnity of the Annunciation, which I have seen so much in my own very personal reflection, that what happened to Mary is precisely also our journey in life as told by God. And whatever state of life, whatever profession we are here, and whatever way we are serving the Lord. But above all, my brothers and sisters, the, the affirmation or the proclamation or the profession of Mary 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be done to me according to my will. It is a profession of obedience, obedience to the Father, obedience to those in charge of the community, obedience to the Jewish law, obedience to the practices J.C. has grown up. But that obedience is not simply ended on that, but it went on until the plan of God has been fulfilled. Because of the obedience of Mary to God, to their community and to their lost practices and cultures, she was even to be herself to the world. And so, my brothers and sisters, especially those who will have your profession today, I wish I share to you these are the things that we have in mind. We are told that the of God, let us eat our, let us do our work in joy, in gratitude, with dedication, relying on God, but about all we do, because God wants it for us. God wants you to do it, and God will do it through us, because precisely we allow Him to dwell in our life. To you, my brothers and sisters, especially to this, may this grace of God be given upon us. May Mary always walk with us and remind us of her life, even as the Second Vatican Council exhorts us all to continue to look at her so that she will be the shining light in our life in order to live the life to the world. May the grace of God be upon us all, and we will live our vocation truly as it is, because it is a call for God, and that will be our fulfillment.